Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Edi, wearing a hoodie because it's a poco frio here in Portugal, yes. In today's video, guys, I have four amazing Bitcoin jars really showing you what is exactly happening to Bitcoin at the moment. Shit loads of volume. Yes, a trading tip, a travel tip, some live advice, answering one of the questions, a special question again, and talking about the news. Uh, probably two news items, special news items. One of them is really important to here today guys now let's quickly jump into the charts first to show you exactly what is happening in the short term but way more important in the long term bam the first chart for today guys of course this beautiful four hour chart now look the all-time high of Bitcoin at the moment officially is uh, 73,865 US dollar with this wick over there. Uh, there is some resistance. We can see one, two, three, four, five, six candles trying to break this area of 74k. And um, if we don't break it, we fall back to this midline over here. This is a 72k level, and even to the Bollinger Band bottom over there of 69,000 US dollar will still be very bullish. The thing I want to explain to you a little bit better is yesterday's chart. Because yesterday I shared a chart that we would take a doubling in the Bitcoin price within a couple of days. Now, look, this over there left on the bottom. It was the top in 2013. That was a top of like $260. When we broke that over here in November 2013, it took in total 12 bars to double from 250, let's say, to 500 US dollar. This is the 2013-14 bull market. Now, let's move forward now. Now we go over here, guys, to the bull market of 2017. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit. So we know that the top in 2014 was $1,200. If we take that top line to the bull market here in 2016-17, the moment we really broke that over here, the second time, the first time we went above and down below, then we broke it and we stayed above it. From there, from $1,200 to like, $2,400 took around 50 bars, 50 days. Every candle is a day. So the moment we break these all-time highs, that is also the moment we almost double in price and here 12 days and here it was 50 days. Now, of course, we're going to continue our adventure because that was a 2070 bull market. You can now see how small those bull markets here in 2014 look if you compare them here to 2017, because we went all the way up to 20k. And the moment we went to 20k, that was the new bull market top. Now, then we moved to the bull market of 2020-21, the last one. The moment we broke 20k over here, that is the moment we break 20k. It took, in total, 23 days to double 20k to 40k. It took 23 days. Within a month, we doubled from 20k to 40k, guys. Now, then we zoom out a little bit more. Of course, now you see that a 21 bull market makes 2017 look like nothing. And yeah, 2014 is like not even seeing bull in the chart anymore. So now we know that we had the previous bull market top over here at around uh, 69k. The moment we break that top, 69k is over there. How many days will it now take for us to double the Bitcoin price of 70k to 140k? Because we have been doubling every time again and again and again. Will it take 20 days? That would bring us somewhere here to April 2nd. Will it take 90 days, the longest amount of days that we have spent? It will take us till June 2024. But if we repeat history and we double uh, and we double after breaking a previous autumn high a certain amount of days then it will be between 20 and 90 days this means we could even reach 140k in the summer of 2024 that would be insane but if we look to the past every time again and again it just took a couple of days to double after we broke the previous all-time high now if we look at this chart, we can see that we did make an all-time high also in the realized price. In the previous bull market top, we had an all-time high of 24,500-ish. Uh, yeah, here 24,500 was the all-time high of the realized price. At the moment, guys, the realized price is 26,587. So yes, 
also there at top in the realized price. Now the thing that you need to understand is every time when we do that, so let's for example over here, the realized price was like around 324. The moment we broke it for the first time over there, that is when that realized price goes up drastically, the yellow line. Here, 2017, top was like 5,392. Let's see, the moment we break that over there, the yellow line goes up, orange line, drastically. Now, we are breaking this top, so that the orange line is going to go move up drastically, which will also make sure that the Bitcoin price increase. This, and as you look to the past, yes, then the bottom will be above the 26K, or around the 26K at the moment. At the end of the bull market, that orange line will probably be above 40 to 50K. Beautiful charts. Now, I have some more interesting charts for you guys. Let me see if I can pop them up for you. These charts. Uh, these charts show you the inflows of Bitcoin. And at the moment, these inflows are insane. At the moment, yesterday, we experienced a day with $1 billion worth of inflows. This is expressed in dollars, but the Bitcoin spot ETF. One billion US dollar of inflows. And the day after was 684 billion US dollar. Just look at all these inflows. A few outflows in the beginning, there was that whole grayscale stuff, but now we are climbing more inflows, more inflows over here, more inflows, even more inflows, a billion dollar. See here on the left that we started at the 11th of uh, January with uh, 0 0.6 billion US dollar. But if you now compound it at all, that we are already here on 12th of March of 11.14 billion uh, US dollars inflows in a daily. So this was the highest day. These are insane levels. And if we now just look, for example, at IBIT, of course, we know that's BlackRock's spot ETF they have now more than 200,000 Bitcoins. They started with zero on 12th January. They are now here on 12th March, around 200,000 Bitcoins. Look at this. This is just the amount of Bitcoins being bought by the spot ETF of BlackRock. 8,000, 8,000, 6,000, 6,000, 3, 2, 9, 12,000, 8,000. These are the amounts of daily inflows, just IBIT. We all know that MicroStrategy has a shitload of Bitcoins. And MicroStrategy did a long time about it. It started here in 2020, accumulating all the way up to there, above 200,000 Bitcoins. That red line is MicroStrategy, long term believer. This blue line is IBIT. They accumulated the same amount of Bitcoins in one month time. That took MicroStrategy four years. Four years against one month. Where is this going to end? How many more Bitcoins is BlackRock going to buy? And the other nine spot ETF companies. If this buying pressure stays like this, we can adjust our bull market target to way higher than 150k. But every bull market has also its dips. But we can of course clearly see that the dips in this bull market over here are not as big as the dips that we usually see. Normally the dips are bigger. But at the moment we can see very small dips here. These red dips. It's all around 20% dips. An average is now 6% over here. If we look to the previous bull markets here, look how big these dips were. 60%, the average of 20%. In this bull market, 2017, we had 32% the biggest dip, and we had an average 10%. Over here, the biggest dip was 70%, an average 20%, 50%, and 18%. Now we have the maximum dip of 90%, an average of 5.4%. All-time average drawdowns is 15%. So yes, this institutional investment, the accumulation of a shitload of Bitcoins, is making sure we have smaller dips. It still looks like a normal bull market with, with, with beautiful runs and dips, but the dips became smaller, which makes me think that the bear market dip will also be smaller. 
it won't be a 70% crash like we used to have. Because this institutional inflow of Bitcoins through the spot ETFs, they are not going to dump as easy as the weekends of the retail investors. Last chart is this one, guys. There's a two monthly chart. So every candle is two months. Whenever that Bollinger Band compresses over here, after that, we get a huge breakout of the Bitcoin price. Compresses, breakout. We are compressing. We are going to see a huge breakout. On the bottom, we can see the log Bollinger Band width. Every time when we have these triangles, these yellow ones, we go up. Yellow one, we go up. Yellow one, we will go up. This is just the start of the bull market and it's not ending soon. It will take another 12 months, in my honest opinion, six of these candles before we see a top way above that 100k level. Amazing chart. I hope you really enjoyed those charts. Yes, in the short term, of course, we can find support on all the support levels and we find resistance on all these resistance levels. But please understand, we are just getting started in this bull market. We will go higher than 70K, probably higher than 100K. So every Bitcoin you buy today, you can still make 30K profits in the next one years on one Bitcoin, guys. So look at that volume that is flowing into the market. One billion US dollar worth of Bitcoin was accumulated through the spot ETFs. We're not even talking about exchanges. We're not even talking about retail investors. We're not even talking about any other way of buying Bitcoin. Only the spot ETFs together, already $1 billion volume. This is insane numbers, guys. We created an all-time high in the realized price. Just look to the left on the chart. Every time when we create a new all-time high in the realized price, we know we are going to go into the next part of the bull market and an explosive run. The next 12 months will be explosively bullish for Bitcoin. Let's jump into the trading tip. The trading tip for today is a very simple one, guys. If you ask me what to invest in, my answer will always be very simple. Only invest in those kind of assets that can't be controlled or printed by the government or the central bank. So Bitcoin can't be controlled by governments, can't be printed by central banks, safe asset to invest in. Gold can't be printed by the governments, can't be printed or controlled by the central banks. So yes, still a safe asset to invest in. Of course, gold, can be influenced a little bit by the central banks and the governments, but still, everyone can start to find gold now wherever they want, in rivers or wherever. You can start to mine even gold. So all those things that are decentralized in accumulation, everyone can drill for oil, everyone can drill for gold or mine for gold, everyone can start mining Bitcoin today. All of those assets that can't be influenced or printed by the governments, and of course, Bitcoin is the most important of all of them, those assets you should be investing in. Real estate, nice asset to reinvest in, but can be influenced and controlled by governments. Even if you own this building, if they make a new law that you can't rent it out anymore, you won't be making profits. If they increase the interest on mortgages, nobody will be able to buy at real estate. So for me, real estate can't be compared to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the number one performing asset of the last decade and should be the number one asset on your list when it comes to investing or protecting your capital against inflation. That was a training tip for today. Only invest in those assets that can't be printed or controlled by any centralized entity. The travel tip for today, guys, is about flying versus the taxi. Sometimes when you need to travel like short, medium distances, for example, from Portugal to Spain, I know flying is very cheap nowadays in Europe, but still it's a lot of organization. You need to be a couple of hours before you fly on the airport. You need to go to the airport. You need to fly two hours. Then you need to, you know, check in, check out all of the stuff, the baggage. So sometimes it's way more easy to book a taxi. For example, now to Sierra Nevada, we could fly there and take a taxi into the ski area, but we chose to take a taxi from Lagos, Portugal to Sierra Nevada, Spain. That's a six hour drive. In total, such a taxi will cost us like 600 US dollar. That 600 US dollar for five people from door to door is not as expensive as flying with five people and taxis to the airport and from the airport. And you have all the comfort of just stepping into your car at your house with all the luggage and stepping out in the ski resort at your house with all the luggage without the whole hassle of 
onboarding, passport checks, and all that stuff. So we sometimes choose to take a taxi instead of flying because it's just a little bit more luxury. This time we have a very beautiful Mercedes van, so we can even chat with each other while we're driving. I can even do some work while I'm driving. So yes, the travel tip for today is don't always directly look at flying when taxis are also an option. And by taxis, you also support the local economy because we are booking a taxi from Lagos, Portugal, supporting a Portuguese company instead of the huge airlines that already make a shitload of money. Sometimes think about the local people as well and use the taxis. And then answering one of the questions of one of the followers. And that question was of a follower that probably didn't watch all our videos or doesn't know our story. But the question was, Didi, how do you off-ramp into fiat systems? We don't. <laughs> We don't use fiat systems. We don't sell our bitcoins for euros or for dollars. We only sell a tiny bit of bitcoins for euros because we need those euros, for example, to buy stuff in Europe or for Thai baht if we need to buy something in Thailand. But when we have euros or Thai baht left, we will always exchange back to bitcoin. Bitcoin is our core capital. So there is no use case for us to exchange bitcoins into euros into a bank account. We don't have bank accounts. We are already unbanked for more than seven years and we will stay unbanked. Yes, we use all those crypto providing debit cards beautifully so we can spend our bitcoins all over the world with these debit cards. We can also spend bitcoin all over the world peer to peer. And that is how we treat bitcoin as our core capital that we use to spend all over the world. And if we need to exchange Bitcoin into any fiat currencies, we will only do a tiny little bit that we really need that month to spend in that country. The rest will always stay in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is our core capital and Bitcoin should be your core capital as well. Take all your money from your bank accounts put it in deflationary Bitcoin, the store of value of the 21st century, the gold of the 21st century, and you will protect all your capital against inflation. And so your purchasing power will stay the same or even increase instead of the decreasing purchasing power because of the inflation, because you stay in euros or dollars. We don't use Bitcoin to make profits to make more euros and to put those euros on the bank account again. There is no use case for that because your purchasing power will be going up in smoke if you keep your money on a bank account. Simple as that. Think different. Use Bitcoin as your core capital, as your protection against inflation, your store of value, and as your peer-to-peer -peer cash to spend it all over the world. That is the answer to the question. The news for today, again about Thailand. Yes, I know we left Thailand, but Thailand keeps bombing us with really positive news. Because Thailand just announced that they approved the exemption of personal income tax from token profits. So they now allow companies to raise capital with tokens without paying tax on it. And they allow people to buy and sell these tokens to make profit without even need to pay tax on that as well. So there's a complete exemption of tax when it comes to token offerings now in Thailand. And the reason why they do it is because they want to make Thailand a hub for the whole crypto community. Not only for the people that use cryptocurrency, but also for the companies that want to launch token offerings in Thailand as a Thai company. They don't need to pay tax anymore. An exemption for all the personal income tax when it comes to token offerings. Amazing news for Thailand. I think Thailand will become one of the biggest crypto hubs in the future. Yes, that is why I spend there five to six months a year. Now, very happy to be also a few months here in Europe, but also looking forward to all the new companies that probably will register now in Thailand to do all these token fundraising events because there they don't need to pay tax anymore. And that is how the whole world should treat these tokens and bitcoins. Why are all those European countries making it so difficult for their companies to set up a business in the Netherlands, for example, to do the same? We are losing the competition to Asia because Asia is embracing cryptocurrency, mainly Bitcoin and all the token offerings with open arms. They know this is the future. They know this decentralized way of raising capital for new startups is the future. That is how you get capital into the country as well. That is how you get people to have profits in your country and to spend these profits again on products. And by that, enhance the economy of a country. 
only the Western countries are stopping this and I really don't understand why. Why would you stop the evolution of technology if you can be one of the front runners of that technology? That was the news for the day. Again, beautiful news for Thailand. And of course, the last part of the video, the inspirational quote for today is, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. That is exactly where life will start to begin. You need to understand that you need to be willing to step out of your comfort zone to really start living. Everything in your comfort zone is not life. That is running the hamster wheel automatically without even thinking, waking up, breakfast, going to your job, doing your job, going home, doing some sports, having dinner, etc. Every time automatically programmed on that same circle, running around, running around. If you keep running in this comfort zone, your life will never really start. It will only start when you step outside of the box, when you think outside of the box, when you start to live outside of the box, outside of your comfort zone. It may feel a little bit awkward in the beginning, but the moment you get used to that new way of living, that new freedom, all those new opportunities that will come onto your path, the moment you will grab those opportunities outside of your comfort zone, that is the moment when your life will really start to begin, guys. That is really beautiful. Just imagine, you don't need to do investments, you don't need millions, you don't need billions, you don't need anything. The only thing that you need to do is look in the mirror, convince yourself to step outside of your comfort zone and start to grab life by the balls. And that is all what it takes to start this complete new life. Step outside of your comfort zone, try it. Try it for six months. If you don't like it, you can always go back running at hamster wheel in that comfort zone again. But I guarantee you, when you try it once and you step outside of that comfort zone, you will never go back into that hamster wheel. Because that hamster wheel, if you step aside, you will see that it's jail time. You should be enjoying freedom time, but you will only achieve it when you step outside of your comfort zone. That was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What did you think about the charts, all the tips, and of course, also the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I wish you an amazing day, and see you tomorrow morning again. Bam. <music>